welcome on this second Sunday after Christmas. It is also Epiphany Sunday, being the closest Sunday to the Feast of the Epiphany, which is the 6th of January, the day when you can, if you like, take down your decorations if you haven't done so already. And it is when the wise men, we celebrate the wise men arriving in Bethlehem to discover the Christ child, when the light of the world was revealed to the nations beyond the borders of Israel, beyond the borders of Palestine. And so that is um, our celebration today. We have Suzanne Miller, who will be preaching. And this will be her last Sunday preaching here, um, as she is going to be ordained very soon as a transitional deacon. And she will be um, having at least a six month placement at the Church of Resurrection in Centerville. We are going to miss her enormously. But her actual last Sunday will be next Sunday, the 10th. And at, after that service or before that service, we haven't made a decision yet, we will be presenting her with gifts on her way and her family too. We hope that one day she will come back to serve here at Good Shepherd, but for the meantime, we send her on her way uh, with our blessings and blessings and love for her and the whole family. So our service this morning is morning prayer. Next week, we will have a Eucharist uh, with drive-by communion. But today we have morning prayer for Epiphany Sunday. And so after the first sentence, we will begin with the confession on page 79. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Please join me in saying the Jubilate, on page 82 of the prayer book. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Today's psalm is Psalm 84 on page 707. Psalm 84, verses 1 to 8. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! 
My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. Glory to the Son, and to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from the prophecy of, I of Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning at verse 7. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labour together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their full of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty." Here ends the first lesson. Please join me in saying Canticle number 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, Deep gloom enshrouds the peoples, but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. 
Our second letter is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what the hope is to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for those of us who believe according to the working of his great power. Here ends the second lesson. Please join me in saying the Song of Simeon, Canticle number 17, on page 93 of the prayer book. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Saviour, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I also may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here ends the third lesson. I now invite you to listen to Suzanne 
as she preaches on the, on the lessons for today. Hello, Good Shepherd. Um, first of all, I just want to tell you that I wish we could all do this together and say goodbye together. Um, we can't, and I'm so sad. Um, but I am going to do this sermon and hopefully not cry um, during it. <laughs> but I want you to know how much I love you and I will miss you. We all will miss you. So here we go. Remember during the fourth week of Advent, we heard about Mary's visitation from the angel telling her that she would carry the Son of God in her womb. Mary said, Here I am, Lord. Let it be according to your will. In the sermon, Vanessa brought forth some pretty funny yet thoughtful questions. What if Mary said no? What if she did not feel as though she could do it? And my personal favorite, what if she said, well, God, I just don't feel comfortable with this. Can't I just stay play and stay put and have normal kids? These questions resonated with me over these past few weeks. And here we are on Epiphany, presented with another situation where people had choices. They could say yes or they could say no. Only this time... It involves a king by the name of Herod and three wise men. These three wise men had been following a star that had appeared earlier and they knew it would guide them to a baby named Jesus. So when these three wise men made it to Herod's palace and they said, have you seen him? Have you heard of him? Their question was innocent enough, but Herod became frightened. And when he became frightened, he secretly told the wise men to go find Jesus. It sounds innocent enough. However, we know what happened. We can read ahead in the passage and find out that there were some gruesome, awful killings of little boys under the age of two because of Herod's fear. But we don't know that in this passage. We just know that these wise men are going to continue on their journey. They were unaware of his intentions. And so as they started up again, following this star, they see that it stopped. And I love this verse. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Let's imagine for a minute what these three wise men faced. One, we do not know how long they were on their journey. They probably felt tired. They felt dirty. And they could have given up at any moment. They kept going. They could have said, oh, you know what? Herod's palace is pretty comfortable. I think I'm going to stay here for a while. They could have given up at any moment. And they could have said, ah, oh, well, ah, we've traveled long enough. Do we have to finish our journey? But they kept going. What would they have missed out on if they decided to say no? They would have missed out on this experiencing tremendous joy when that star stopped. The tremendous joy of feeling like they had finally made it. They get to see the Son of God. And so they did. They saw the Son of God and they presented him with gifts. And that night they had a dream. And in the dream, they were warned not to go back to see Herod. 
And here we are again, presented with another choice. They could have gotten up in the morning and said, wow, you had that same dream? Uh, it's just a coincidence. Herod doesn't mean anything by it. But they didn't. They listened to their dream and to one another and to God. And they instead made the journey back to their homelands. Now, we can say, what if they said no? And this one's a little bit more difficult than the last ones because there were many kids who died. But we've asked what if enough. And so we have to now move forward. And there are many stories in the Bible in which we can go, what if? There are many stories in our own lives in which we can say, what if I had done this differently? But we can't. We can't allow ourselves to go back. I personally am very excited and pleased that Mary and the wise men both made very difficult decisions to listen to God. We would not get to hear such personal rich stories, although I know God would have figured something else out. He's God. But we get to hear about their choices. And somehow these choices are much more real for us than any other stories we could hear. Now, every day we face our own choices. And they might not be life-altering or having to go tell a king about where a child is located, but they are super important for us. They are pressing for our families, for our friends, for our loved ones, for our neighbors, and for even strangers, are these choices that we make. And during these last five years of my own journey, I have had to make some very tough decisions. For five very long years, <laughs> it seems like 50 some days, I have traveled and I have become weary. I have wanted to choose to give up. I've wanted to say, well, God, I'm comfortable where I'm at. Pretty comfortable. Just please leave me alone with all this, uh, what do you call it? Calling business. Do I have to follow a calling? It has been as though I have been being pulled by some unseeable force. And it's almost like I had no choice in the matter but to keep going. Like these three wise men, yes, you have a choice, but at some other level, you don't. You just have to keep going. I guess you can call this my own personal star. I have had to keep following the star. And guess what? It has finally stopped, and I feel such tremendous joy and relief. But it's only for a moment. It's this pause. And guess what? Again, there's going to be another star and another star. My journey will not stop. It will just go on pause so I can experience this joy and look back and see how much I've learned and grown from the experience. I will never be done traveling and I must be open to more experiences and another long journey, whatever it may look like. Without all of these journeys, growth doesn't happen. And the decisions that we make we cannot learn from them. Our family has been a part of Good Shepherd since 2004. I will never forget the day I decided to stay. <laughs> the choice. I was alone with my two little boys. They were babies. Sam was two. Now he's 18. William was six months old. Now he's 17. And Maggie wasn't even born yet, and now she is 14. I remember feeling overwhelmed. Matt had just gone on his first six-month deployment, 
And here I was in a church and I didn't know a soul. And William starts crying. And I remember Lori Linton coming up, swooping at William in her arms and rocking him to sleep. And that is what helped me make the decision to stay and keep going to Good Shepherd. The openness and love of all of you at the church. It wasn't the programs. It wasn't how much outreach we were doing. It was just the simple love, the one simple act of holding my baby and helping me through. And you all have not stopped that since 2004. Without you, I would not be brave enough to make this tough decision to leave my comfortable church and move out into the unknown. I would not be brave enough to follow my own star. Good Shepherd, you have been that source of strength for me and encouraging me through difficult times and happy times. And I will miss seeing your faces every single week. Thankfully, we're not moving out of state um, and we're not gonna be far from one another. And hopefully, we can continue our friendship and our family with you. Although it won't be at the same church, we will still have connections with you that cannot be broken. I do wanna leave you with a few parting words. Please, 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 my friends, do not be afraid to follow your star. Even though the journey may be long and full of uncertainties, God is and will always be guiding you. I know that sounds cliche, and it is cliche, but it is truth. Keep going. Sorry, my neighbors are driving around up and down the street. <laughs> Do not tell God no because of your own fears. Please, please never tell him no because you are fearful. Open your hearts and your minds and feel the joy when your star finally stops and pauses for that moment. And remember, you still get to continue more journeys. And please never, ever, ever allow yourselves to be so comfortable you cannot move. I'm not talking move in churches. I'm just talking moving in general. Good Shepherd, you have always been a moving force in our lives. Thank you. Thank you for praying for us and for coming to our house for fun, fun parties. And believe me, hopefully in June, and hopefully when I become a priest in June, we are going to have a huge party if this COVID business is over. And it is going to be a blast. And I cannot wait. Matt and I... Do hope to return one day, but know that we must follow this path set before us. And so I end with what Paul said to the Ephesians today. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. And Good Shepherd, please remember me in your prayers too. I need your support and love more than ever. And I say all this in your holy, precious name, God's holy, precious name. Amen.
And so let us respond to our to the word of God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favour through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we pray for one another, as we pray for our community, and as we remember the events surrounding the arrival of the wise men, let us pray for the oppressed. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land 
who live with injustice, terror, disease and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these our neighbours. Strengthen those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we remember the child Jesus, we pray for the care of children. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we remember those who are struggling with sickness, loneliness, for those who are troubled in any way. We pray, O merciful Father, who has taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. Look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom our prayers are offered. And at this point we remember those in particular need in our own families and among our own friends. Remember them, O Lord, in mercy. Nourish their souls with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray also for all who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or other wonderful occasions at this time. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favour, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let us bring all our prayers and thanksgivings to God in the general thanksgiving on page 101 in the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. 
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and with all whose lives you touch, this Christmas tide, this Epiphany tide, and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I look forward to seeing you next week for our Eucharist and also um, for celebrating with Suzanne as she moves on in a new stage of her ministry, her vocation, and to wish them all well. God bless you. Keep safe and have fun. Amen.